Letitia Elizabeth Landon, an introduction. Letitia Elizabeth Landon was born on 14th of August 1802 in Chelsea, London. A precocious child, she had her first poem published in 1820 using the single L as her marker. The following year, her first volume appeared and sold well. She published a further two poems that same year with just the initials L-E-L. -E it provided the basis for much intrigue. She became the chief reviewer of the Gazette and published her second collection, The Improvisatrice, in 1824. By 1826, rumours began to circulate that she had had affairs. For several years, they continued to circulate until she broke off an engagement when her betrothed, upon further investigation, found them to be unfounded. Her words reflect the lack of trust she felt. The mere suspicion is dreadful as death, she said. On June the 7th, 1838, she married George Maclean, initially in secret, and a month later they sailed to Cape Coast. However, the marriage proved to be short-lived, as on October the 15th, Letitia was found dead, a bottle of Prusic acid in her hand. Her reputation as a poet diminished until fairly recently. Her work felt to be simplistic and too simply constructed. However, when put into context, it is more rightly seen as working on many levels and meanings, as was needed for those more moral times. These poems are read for you by Richard Midgley and Gazella Rowe. Revenge by Letitia Elizabeth Landon I gaze upon her smile. Seem as you drank the very air, her breath perfumed the while, and wake for her the gifted line that wild and witching lay, and swear your heart is as a shrine that only owns her sway. Tis well, I am revenged at last. Mark you that scornful cheek. The eye averted as you passed spoke more than words could speak. I now, by all the bitter tears that I have shed for thee, the racking doubts, the burning fears, avenge they well may be. By the nights passed in sleepless care, the days of endless woe, all that you taught my heart to bear, all that yourself will know. I would not wish to see you laid within an early tomb. I should forget how you betrayed and only weep your doom. But this is fitting punishment to live and love in vain. O oh, my wrung heart, be thou content, and feed upon his pain. Go thou and watch her lightest sigh, thine own it will not be, and bask beneath her sunny eye, it will not turn on thee. Tis well, the rack, the chain, the wheel, far better hadst thou proved, even I could almost pity feel, for thou art not beloved. The Soldier's Funeral by Letitia Elizabeth Landon The muffled drum rolled on the air. Warriors with stately step were there. On every arm was the black crepe bound. Every carbine was turned to the ground. Solemn the sound of their measured tread. As silent and slow, they followed the dead. The riderless horse was led in the rear. There were white plumes waving over the bier. Helmet and sword were laid on the pall, for it was a soldier's funeral. That soldier had stood on the battle plain, where every step was over the slain. But the brand and the ball had passed him by, and he came to his native land to die. It was hard to come to that native land, and not clasp one familiar hand. T'was hard to be numbered amid the dead before he could hear his welcome said. But t'was something to see its cliffs once more and to lay his bones on his own loved shore, to think that the friends of his youth might weep or the green grass turf of the soldiers sleep. The bugle ceased their wailing sound as the coffin was lowered into the ground. A volley was fired, a blessing said. One moment's pause, and they left the dead. I saw a poor and aged man. His step was feeble, his cheek was wan. 
He knelt him down on the new raised mound. His face was bowed on the cold, damp ground. He raised his head. His tears were dumb. The father had prayed for his only son. The Pilgrim by Letitia Elizabeth Landon Vain folly of another age, this wandering over earth, to find the peace by some dark sin banished our household hearth. On Lebanon the dark green pines wave over sacred ground, and Carmel's consecrated rose springs from a hallowed mound. Glorious the truth they testify, and blessed is their name, but even in such a sacred spot are sin and woe the same. O oh, pilgrim, with each toilsome step vain every weary day, there is no charm in soil or shrine to wash thy guilt away. Return with prayer and tear, return to those who weep at home, to dry their tears will more avail than o'er a world to roam. There's hope for one who leaves with shame the guilt that lured before. Remember, he who said repent said also sin no more. Return, and in thy daily round of duty and of love thou best will find that patient faith which lifts the soul above. In every innocent prayer each child lisps at his father's knee, if thine has been to teach that prayer there will be hope for thee. There is a small white church that stands beside thy father's grave, there kneel and pour those earnest prayers that sanctify and save. Around thee draw thine own home ties, and with a chastened mind, in meek well-doing, seek that peace no wandering will find. In charity and penitence thy sin will be forgiven. Pilgrim, the heart is the true shrine whence prayers ascend to heaven. <laughs>